once in one prayer in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Good morning to you, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to this, our third Sunday of Advent worship service. And for those who are watching and listening by way of social media, I also say a special good morning to you and welcome. Will you please stand for the call to worship? Come and hear all of you who have great respect for God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call in God's name. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises. Tell of God's wonderful works. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Come and hear what God has done. Let us declare what God has done for our souls. God, we just pause to say thank you for this moment and for this opportunity, oh God, and for the gift of life and for the privilege of seeing another day. We might be few in numbers, oh God, as your scripture says we are one or two or three gathered in your name, they will be you also. And so this morning, oh God, we give you the honor and praise and glory, oh God, for bringing us here once again, oh God, to give you the praise and honor. This morning, O oh God, even though we are not able to sing, O oh God, we have to lift our spirit, O oh God, and give you thanks. We pray, O oh God, for those who are on their way and ask that you hasten your step. And for those who are at home, O oh God, and listening, O oh God, we ask that you just open their hearts and their minds, O oh God, so their focus will be on you. And so, Lord, whatever they said and done, O oh God, they will surely be touched by the message that is given to them. And so this morning, O oh God, we ask for a special anointing on the one who will bring the message. And we ask these in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's repeat the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now have a church. We are happy. We 
are happy because number one, we woke up this morning. And since we woke up this morning, we can give God thanks for waking us up for something special today. So open your hearts to receive something special. God is going to do something in our lives today so we can rejoice. This morning when I woke up, I saw trucks with um, uh, 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 the, the COVID vaccine going to packing the trucks and doing all sorts of things. And I saw these two, I call them humongous trucks, rolling out with the vaccine. We just want to give God thanks that he has provided the intellect in men's lives so that they can do something in order to keep the vaccine, the, the COVID away from us. But we must not relax. We must not relax. We must still cover up. We must still stay distance, of the safe distance. We must still wash our hands because we are not going to see the effects of the, the vaccine maybe until summer. No, I, I am not going to enforce that you take it or you don't want to take it, just pray to God. So, we have the joy this morning because we have hope, yes? And we can have peace in our minds. And we can truly say the joy of the Lord is our strength. So rejoice, children, in whatever is happening in your lives. Just say the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I will continue to move on. Regardless of what is happening around me, I will rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. So, Father God, we just want to thank you this morning for the children that are around us and children who are far away from us. We ask you, oh God, to cover them wherever they are. Let them rejoice in your strength because whatever is happening around them, they can still say, God, I thank you. So, Father God, please just bless our children and their parents and their caretakers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now open our hearts and our minds to hear Brother Gums on his this time.
same will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring our fruits in its due season. The same will be like a, the mountain of Zion that can never be moved. Father, we thank you because you are a promise keeper. We bless your holy name because our hands are in yours. Hence, we are not afraid. Come, son, come, rain, Lord. You are the same. You change it not. Lord, you are not like the weather that changes. You are God. Father, we bless you and we adore you for all the blessings you rain upon us and for the opportunity we have to say thank you. And for this time that we have to demonstrate our gratitude with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We bless you because of your goodness. It never fails. And it is new every morning. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful God you are. Yeah. We just want to say thank you. We can't just thank you enough, but we lack the language. And the only language you've given us is to say thank you. Once more, Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen. Now we will read, uh, I will read the first lesson. The first lesson is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 61. I will read from verse 1 through 4 and verse 8 through 11. It's in our bulletin. Let's open to it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of revenge of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a gala instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called books of righteousness, the plant of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastation. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. The descendants shall, their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offsprings among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people who the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt, exalt in, the, in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as garden cause what is uh, sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. May the Lord bless his words into our hearts. Amen. 
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And this is found in St. John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, and then 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed. I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who say come. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thumb of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Here ends the reading of the Gospel assigned for today. Please be seated. Our dear sister Cora Dora will now offer a solo.
One wonders why would there be need for God to challenge the people now to be different, having gone through Babylonian captivity. You would have thought that they would have learned their lesson. You would have thought that now they return to the to Jerusalem, they would be living differently. But ever so often, what we find when people get reprieve is that they return to their old habits. They return to the ways in which they once treated each other and not something of looking at life through the eyes of deliverance. So they treated their brothers and sisters as if they were less than themselves. They behave as if they were better than and treated others as if they had no significance. Justice was not the watchword. Righteousness was not the reality. It was as if everyone was for himself. After God has restored you, when you should be thinking about us rather than me, you took from others what was rightfully theirs. We are at a crossroads, you know, having gone through the last four years, when those who had were disinherited. Those who thought that they was elected and nothing short of dismay became our reality. We are at the crossroads of restoration. We are at the crossroads of hope. We are at that point where we can begin to see the end from here have been going through for the last, I would almost say 12 months, COVID, and seeing the vaccines being shipped out, we might become lulled into a place of comfort and think about ourselves rather than others and become purveyors of evil and destruction rather than peace and wholeness. We have to be careful that we do not fall back into a place of selfishness or self-interest at the expense of others. So yes, we are at the crossroads. And we have to listen to what God is saying to us because it's not going to be dependent upon the 46th president. He can do what he can. But when all is said and done, it depends upon us. And if you really listen to what God was saying to ancient Israel, after restoration had happened, then we need to hear that message again for ourselves. It's happening right? Yeah. Or is it happening right? When we look at our text, we hear God pulling us to a place of rightness. A place where righteousness is the watchword. And understand what righteousness really means. It's not about living out some abstract purity. It's about living right relationships. Treating each other right and equal. Putting who you are and what your resources are at the disposal of others so that we are all on the same footing and on the same playing field with the same equality. That's what God was challenging ancient Israel in our text. And that is why I want us now to pay attention to five things. Five things that 
emerge from our text that we need to bear in mind, lest we fall in the same predicament as ancient Israel. And I want us to use the word right as our watchword. When you look at verse 4 of our text, you see there God challenging us to become the repairers of the breach. Listen to what it says. They shall build up and aid the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. God is looking for persons who are willing and ready to become breach repairers. When relationships have fallen apart, when, when persons don't care about each other anymore, but rather about self, God is looking for persons who will stand in the gap as repairers, persons who are willing to bring people together rather than drive them apart or divide. Yeah. God is looking for repairers. God is looking for restorers yeah. of those things that have become ruined. No longer, it should no longer be about what I want, but rather what's in our interest as a whole. It shouldn't simply be that I'm safe and that's all that matters, but rather I'm not safe until all of us are. It's about righteousness. It's about right relationships. It's about treating people as they deserve. Treating people as human beings, and you might just see how that gets played out in the way this vaccine gets distributed. None of us, none of us is safe unless all of us is. That's right. So we have to be careful how we live out life beyond this distribution. So God is looking for repairers of the breach. Where things have gone wrong, God is looking for people who are willing to put themselves in the midst. God is looking for persons who are able to bridge generations. God is looking for agents of peace. But not only is God looking for repairers of the breach as demonstrated in verse 4, God is also looking for interventionists. Big word, no? God is looking for interventionists. People who are willing to interrupt stuff. You know John Lewis, he talks about good trouble. God is looking for persons who will do good trouble. People who will get in the midst of stuff and interrupt the wrongs as they're happening. And understand, it's going to put your life in danger. It's going to risk yourself. But God is looking for persons whose lives are predicated upon Him rather than upon what we can do for ourselves. God is looking for persons whose faith leads them rather than their fears. So it's not what they can do to me, but rather what God can use me to accomplish. God is looking for interventionists. Persons who will come in and leverage who they are and what they have so that God's will, God's purpose can be accomplished. God's mending those brokenness. God, God repairing the breach. God is looking for repairs of the breach, but that doesn't mean it's all on you. God will equip you so that you will be effective. God is looking for interventionists. Persons who are willing to put themselves on the line. This is how the prophet Isaiah spoke about it. He says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Think about that. When you said yes to Jesus, you placed yourself as, at God's disposal so that when God calls you to be an interventionist, you answer, yes, Lord, I'm ready. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord has tapped me on my shoulder and said, it's you. So when you see wrong happening, you can't sit quietly anymore. You have to speak God's word into the spaces that exist. You have to act out God's word in the midst of others. You have to interrupt those wrong relationships. Those relationships of injustice. But God is not just about calling repairers and interventionists. God is also looking for generational collaborators. You know, we like to talk about all the young people different. They think different. God is looking for persons who are willing to listen and learn. And then, because they have learned and they share the same vision, they can collaborate from where they are and move us to a place where God wants us to be. Look at how God speaks about this through the prophet Isaiah in verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I'll make an everlasting covenant with them. God is looking for generational collaborators, people who are willing to reach across generations and become the hope that God has instilled in us. So God is looking for appearance, no? God is looking for interventionists. God is looking for generational collaborators. And none of us can say that I'm not there because you are a part of your own generation. And that's the place from which you're called to speak to another generation, to connect with another generation, to link arms with another generation. But God is also calling us to be healers. God is calling us to be healers. And if you go back to verse 3, you see where that is played out. No? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Understand what's taking place here. God knows that people have been wounded. God knows that people have been traumatized. God knows that there are persons who have deep-seated wounds. That for a very long time they have been just simply rubbing over rather than getting down to the deep of it. You know, I knew a lady in my village when I was growing up. And I can't call names because we know um, <laughs> Facebook takes you wherever, huh? But this particular lady had a sore foot. And she will not, for the sake of her life, go get it addressed. But she'll constantly wrap and wrap and wrap cloths around it. And before long, she end up losing the foot. Because it needed to be cleaned. It needed to be to, 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 the, 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 the stuff that made it sick to be taken out of it. But until it's taken out, there's no healing. God needs some stuff to be taken out of us so that we are able to live out our lives that is healthy rather than one that is predicated upon illness. You know, when people run off their mouths off and others in a heartbeat, it's not always because they are evil, you know. It's because they haven't dealt with their stuff. And their stuff gets in the way. God is looking for persons who will confront others and say, no, you need to give that up. You need to settle your past so that you are present and are available to God in the God's future. Or as your past will keep you in the past. Look at what he says, he has sent me 
to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. Some of us have remained so imprisoned by our past that we are scared to death that someone might discover who we really are. But the liberation that comes when we live out our lives with authenticity, that God knows who we are and we don't have to pretend. God is looking for healers, persons who are willing and ready to challenge us to be God's people. Look at what he says in verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. You know, it's interesting that same Hebrew word translated salvation is the same word that means heal. So if you really expose yourself to God's salvation, you're exposing yourself to God's healing. And God is looking for persons who are willing to take his healing to where people are injured, where people are marginalized, where people have felt a sense of insignificance of no value at all. So God is looking for repairers. God is looking for interventionists. God is looking for generational collaborators. God is looking for healers. And finally, God is looking for people who have traded themselves to him. Literally sold out their souls to him. A lot of us have sold out our souls to other things. But God is looking for persons who have sold their souls to him, who have traded their souls, they all traded their wills to him. That is why we, this, this passage starts out the way it is, you know. Remember what this was about. They had already returned to Jerusalem. And instead of living out the peace that comes to Jerusalem, what were they doing? They were all about themselves. And so in the midst of that, God chose to raise a prophet. God chose to call people into existence persons who are traded to him, persons whose lives have been given to him. God comes to the faith community and challenges the faith community to be different. The Spirit of the Lord, remember? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you because he has anointed you. You can't claim the anointing and then at the same time say he's calling somebody else. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you if it is. And it is because he has anointed you. Know that he has sent you to bring good news. To proclaim liberty. To bind up the brokenhearted. To release prisoners. To tell people this is the year that God's favor is going to be unleashed. And yes, even as God's favor is unleashed, the day of vengeance is coming for those who have sought to do God's people in. They will get their just reward. And that's why I say, no, don't worry about 46 minus 1. His reward is already set. <laughs> worry about where you are located. Because when all is said and done, each one of us will get our own reward. So here is the thing, what are you? Are you a repairer? Yes. Are you an interventionist? Are you a generational collaborator? Are you a healer? Or are you traded to God? My prayer is, that each one of us will hear God's special call upon us to be all of these things. So that wherever we find ourselves, we will rise to the occasion. Repair where there is brokenness. Intervene where there is injustice. 
be generational collaborators wherever we have to link arms with our brothers and sisters and heal. But remember that we are not anymore our own but God's. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we go to God in prayer, I want to lift up a couple of persons. In prayer, we remember Dion Robinson, Brother Paul's brother. Also remember Brother Paul's sister who is in the hospital. Remember Mr. Henry, Paul's co-worker, who is also in the hospital. Remember Brother Dwayne. Remember our old sick and shut in, and we ask God to make breakthroughs for them. So let us pray to God. God, you are always on the throne, and as such, you have always been in our midst. You promised never to leave us nor forsake us. You determined that we are yours. And because we belong to you, you will facilitate life and health in us, in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, in our souls. And wherever we find ourselves, you will infuse your life. So come, come, O Emmanuel, and bring captive Israel to release. Come, come, O Emmanuel, and breathe new life into us. Come, O come, Emmanuel, and speak new purpose into our lives. Come, O come, Emmanuel, and make us in every way your agents in this world. We are, we are short, O oh God, we pray that you will make up the difference because you never send us without equipping us. And you never send us anywhere you are not willing to accompany us. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves as your servants in this world. This is our prayer. We ask you these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let me Okay, um, also we um Opa's youngest son Chad. Patrice's nephew, um, that goes with leukemia. And so we ask God to make a way for him. But God puts a hedge around him so that this particular diagnosis will fall apart and not hold for him. That whatever treatment they might choose to bring for him, that that treatment will be successful. And that this child, child will be able to live a life of normalcy. They'll be able to live a life of testimony of what God has done and what God is doing. And so we pray, God, that you will make a way for a child. And as you make your way, O oh God, that you'll make your way right through this diagnosis, even as we commend child to you. This is our prayer. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me thank all those who had anything to do with this worship service. Want to thank Taj for getting our bulletins together and for the live streaming. Want to also thank 
Minister Savage for his Ministry of Music. What accounts for the Ministry of Music, why we have steel funds, is the forum for your Ministry of Music. Thank God Paul for the Ministry of Transporting Persons. Want to thank God Cleveland for sanitizing and keeping this space clean. Want to thank the ushers for seeing to it that we follow protocol. Want to thank the lay ministers, Minister Alabisi, Minister Benjamin, and thank Reverend Phil Weather as well for leading and carrying the service forward. I want to remind you to call your brothers and sisters during the week, inquire how they're doing. also want to encourage you to call especially those who are, might be alone. These are shorter days, you know. Darkness comes quickly. Night comes and, and before long, people are back in alone. Yes, Paul? Well, uh, Mr. Bonte, he normally calls me all time of the week, all time of the day. But I haven't heard from him. I'm calling him and no answer. Okay. Well, so what we is answering the phone? His wife doesn't answer, he's not answering. Well, we need to call up and see what's going on here. Please. Okay. And, and also, I want us to remember, you said the Apollites? Yes, sir. <laughs> you and. <laughs> you, <laughs> you and the son. What is that? I was wondering why she said Apollite. <laughs> Apollite. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, want to also encourage us to be in prayer for those who are celebrating birthdays. I know in the bulletin it says Sister Phyllis Paul. She would have been celebrating her birthday on the 15th. In this world, if she was still alive, so what I encourage you to do is to call the family and to encourage them because this time might be difficult for them. You know that she passed this year, earlier this year. So call the family and Casey and the rest of them to encourage them, let them know that you're thinking about them. Already, Sister Comfort. Sister Comfort. Hear me. They say the two shall be one, right? For the bumps? Yeah. So I didn't see her, so I was seeing her. Because the two of one convey to her our best wishes and regards as she celebrates her birthday. Didn't realize that she was born on the same day that Susan was born. But she's a very comforting presence, no? <laughs> So I encourage you to remember your brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays and greet them as time comes and goes. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Oh, the socks, socks drive. You have until next Sunday to bring in your socks. In the bulletin you see that. Please take that with you and return socks. That socks is rather favorite. <laughs> Oh Lord, I tell you. Meet us tomorrow. Yes, and tomorrow we have our regular meal distribution. So from 11 until 2, we encourage persons to come and uh, partake of that. That said, if I'm not forgetting any, if I'm not forgetting, I'm going to invite us to stand to receive the benediction. <laughs> God, we came, we worshipped, and now we return to our world to do service. Resource us so that we can be effective. 
Give us a heart of courage so that we can face down every challenge. And give us a spirit of overcoming so that we'll always be victorious, depending upon you. And so my brothers and sisters, go forth into your world, living as God has called you to live. Be a repairer of the breach, an interventionist, generational collaborator, healer, trader for God. And so may God the Father who loves and takes care of you, God the Son who redeems you by his life, death, and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit who continues to give life to you and to me, may God burn us today and every moment of our lives. Amen. One thing I need to talk said, we need to congratulate Sister Winsome Matthew. Oh yeah. She has just received an award from the Senate of New York Senate. Woman of Distinction. For the work that she has been doing to mobilize folk in our communities so that we can be about God's business. So you can call her up and Congratulate her. God does good things to people at Westchester here. Yeah. If you come to Westchester, you know what's going to happen, right? <laughs>